Hey guys, it's Surgeon here, and welcome to my video on 10 quotes you should be doing when you start off your account. Now, disclaimer before we get into this. Remember that this is a game and that you are starting off playing a game. If you're ever at any point doing these quests and you're not having fun, stop doing them. It's a game. You need to remember to have fun. This is simply if you want to have an idea as to what you should be doing to put your account into a good spot for the later levels, this would be a good guide to come back to. But if you're ever doing these and you're not having fun, do not continue doing this. Enjoy the game first, learn what you like about the game, and then when you're ready to come start progressing your account, then come back to this video. Disclaimer aside, this video was actually requested by one of you guys. The uh, name's actually Ramsey Matuk. I don't know how to actually pronounce that, so I apologize for that. But he gave me the idea in the last video I made, so I went ahead and put this together. Uh, if you guys have any feedback on the video, go ahead and put it in the comment section below. And if you do enjoy it, remember to like it. Also, if you wanna let me know what other videos you wanna see, you know what to do. Put it in the comment section and let me know. Also, if you want to see more of these videos, subscribe. And with that all being said, let's get into this list of top 10 quests that you should be doing when you start off your account. We'll start off this list with probably the most notable member's quest, which is the Waterfall quest. There's a reason that so many members, when they make another account, they start their account, they do this quest. And the reason for that is that upon completion, you're going to get 30 attack and 30 strength if you do it at level 1 which is going to start you off at adamant gear versus your normal bronze or iron gear that you would have at level one. And also, as a plus to that, there are no requirements to this quest at all. No skills and no quest required. The only thing you have to do is be able to dodge moss giants when you run through this area. That's really all you have to do. Other than that, it's a very simple quest to do and it's gonna catapult your account into having some much more easier gear to use to train with rather than trying to train with bronze and iron if you're trying to start off with combat. The next quest we're going to talk about is Plague City. Again, another quest that has no quest requirements and no skill requirements. Not as big of a reward as your Waterfall quest where you're going to get level 30 and some skills, but it is going to unlock the ability to use the already teleport. Again, if you're doing this quest very early on though, you're probably not going to have 51 mage to use that spell. So this also unlocks the ability for you to use already teleport tablets, which you can just buy off of the GE. So. For that reason, I would say this is a very handy uh, quest for new players to do, as you can buy already teleports, which will make it very easy to get to that western side of the map. Instead of having to use like a minigame teleport or a ring of dueling, it's going to teleport you right to the middle of eastern already. Continuing our theme with minimal requirements, let's talk about Priest in Peril has no quest requirements and no actual skill requirements. Now you do have to be able to defeat a level 30 monster without using magic at all, but a level 30 monster with food, it's not that difficult to actually do. In fact, you can actually safe spot it with range as I did on my uh, one of my alts. So, the reason you wanna do this is that it's going to unlock the uh, canvas area, which is basically the eastern side of the map. So we just talked about getting an easy way to the western side of the map, this is going to get us in basically unlock the entire eastern side of the map. So, Priest and Peril, good quest, it unlocks a bunch of other quest lines and unlocks an entirely new area for us. Now that you've unlocked the Canopus area, let's talk about one of the first quests you're going to want to do in that area, and that's the Ghost Ahoy quest. This quest has minimal requirements, the only quests required are the Restless Ghost and Priest and Peril, which you've already done, and then the only skills you need are level 25 agility and level 20 cooking. The reason you want to do this is there's a city on the very far eastern side of the map called Port Phasmatis. It's going to allow you free entry into that area so you can charter to the area and then walk into that area as well which gives you access to one of the closest banks to a furnace at the lower levels. It also unlocks the Ecto file for you which is a one click teleport so basically you can just click on it and it'll automatically teleport you and it'll teleport you right to the Ecto Funtis, which is right to the north of Port Phasmatis. It's a very good teleport to have. It's one of the quickest ways, one of the easiest ways to actually get to that eastern side of the map without having to have uh, ancient magics unlocked or a slayer ring or fairy rings. One click teleport and it's easy to get back if you ever lose it. Let's take a break from the eastern side of the map and move back towards the western side of the map. Tree Gnome Village. No quest requirements, no skill requirements, you just have to defeat a level 112 boss. Now I know that sounds difficult, but you can actually safe spot the, safe spot the boss using either range or mage, as shown in uh, this little clip right here. But basically what you wanna do by unlocking this quest, by finishing this quest, you're going to unlock spirit trees. 
These are a very handy way to move around the map. In fact, there's actually a spirit tree in the Grand Exchange that you can use to teleport to like the Tree Gnome Village or the Tree Gnome Stronghold once you've done that, or once you've done the Grand Tree Quest as well. And it's a very easy way to get to the western side of the map alongside how we just talked about getting the Arty Teleport. This is another way to get closer to like the Gnome areas. And also this is probably gonna be one of the quickest ways to get to Western Arty by teleporting to one of the spirit trees close to that area. And the last gnome quest I have on this list, I promise, is the Grand Tree quest. No quest requirements, again. The only actual requirements you need are 25 agility and the ability to kill a level 172 black demon. Again, like the last quest with Tree Gnome Village, you can safe spot this boss using range or mage. So, that boss is really not that big of a deal. If you have basic level 20 magic, you can probably kill the boss. I'll show you how to save spot it here as well. I'll show you a little gif. But the reason that you want to do this is it's going to give you a ton of attack experience, like actually a ton for very little actual effort that you have to put forth. And it's going to unlock the spirit tree in the tree gnome stronghold, which you're going to be using before you get slayer rings. You're going to be using that to basically teleport into the tree gnome village or into the tree gnome stronghold. And it's going to teleport you very close to a bank. It's going to help you with your tree runs. It's going to get you close to Neve. If you're that high of a level for Slayer, it's going to teleport you close to the Stronghold uh, for Slayer. It's going to give you a lot of good teleports just being able to teleport to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. So I'd recommend the Grand Tree not only for the experience it's going to give you, but unlocking another Spirit Tree as well. The next quest we're going to talk about is the Lost City. No quest requirements. It's kind of a trend going here. The only other requirements are 31 crafting and 36 woodcutting, and the ability to defeat a level 101 uh, tree spirit with minimal gear. Um, and the guide that actually explains how to actually get better gear, but for the purposes of this guide, it's a very easy boss to kill, it's safe spotable, all that fun stuff that we go through in the other guides, or the other quests that I've mentioned. But you want to do this quest because it's going to unlock the ability for you to access Zanaris, which is the fairy land basically of RuneScape. And the reason for that is it's going to have access to a Slayer Master Cheldar, which is level 1 Slayer uh, requirement, and you also need uh, level 70 combat in order to access her. And it's also going to give you the ability to start the entire fairy tale quest line, which is a very important quest line for any end game, any kind of like progression of an account, kind of an intermediate account. And it's also going to give you access to uh, Dragon Daggers and Dragon Longswords, which are probably going to be like some of your first Dragon Weaponry. And they're good training weapons, especially when you're starting off as a, a new player. So I'd recommend doing Zanaris simply for the fact that the weaponry it's going to unlock, as well as the new area it's going to unlock as well. Now I just talked about the Fairy Tale quest line, and we're going to talk about Fairy Tale Part 1 because of the fact that it has low requirements, has no skill requirements actually. It only requires you to have the Nature Spirit done and Lost City done. Two very simple quests, very easy, not a whole lot of requirements for those. The reason you want to do this is once you complete it, if you haven't trained farming at all, it's actually going to get you to level 17 farming straight up. And it's also going to unlock the magic secretaries for you. Now these are something that you can wear and when you harvest either allotments, herbs, grapevines, and hops by 10%. So it's kind of a vital thing for when you start training farming. It's also going to be a very good money maker for when you start farming herbs at the higher levels to make sure that you're gaining more out of these. So I'd highly advise doing Fairy Tale Part 1 as soon as you can. No skill requirements, just a couple quests you gotta get done first. Alright, time for two quests that require a little bit more than the other ones that we've mentioned on this list, but they're not very high requirements and they unlock something very basic for most players, and that's Tears of Guthix. Now what you're going to need for this quest is 43 quest points, 49 fire making, 20 crafting, and 20 mining. Once you have all those, this quest is probably going to take you close to 5 minutes. It's a very short quest, and it's going to unlock the Tears of Guthix minigame, which is something you can do once a week, and it's going to give you a decent amount of experience in the skill that you have the lowest amount of experience in. So it's going to help you out level up some of those skills that you really don't like doing, so it's going to make the game more enjoyable in the long run. And to end off this list, probably the quest that has the most requirements on this list is Animal Magnetism. In order to do this quest, you're going to need to have the Restless Ghost, Earnest Chicken, and Priest in Peril all completed. Alongside that, you're also going to need 18 Slayer, 19 Crafting, 30 Range, and 35 Woodcutting. Now, that's a lot of requirements, especially for a guide that's about newbie quests or quests you should be doing when you're starting off an account. But the reward for doing this quest is so good, I couldn't leave it off this list. And that's how it's going to give you access to Ava's devices. It's going to give you access to the Ava's Attractor at level 30 and it's going to give you access to the Avis Accumulator at level 50. 
Now the Avis Accumulator is actually the best in slot cape for range in the higher levels next to a Accumulator Max cape, but we're not talking about that. And what it does is it gives you a range attack bonus as well as whenever you shoot arrows, bolts, knives, whatever, it actually picks up a good portion of the um, ammunition that you're firing so that way you don't have to go pick it up all the time and you don't lose as much ammo when you're training ranged. So I'd highly advise getting this one done. Again, I put it as the last one on the list for a reason as it's going to have more requirements than anything else on this list. So I want to make sure that you guys have done some prep work beforehand and then you're kind of ready for, okay, I got to bang out some of these skills and then I can do this and then my account's in a good spot when it comes to questing. And with all that being said, that's going to do it for this video on my top 10 quests for doing as a newbie. I hope you guys found this video helpful, entertaining, understandable, whatever the case may be. Hopefully you're still here at the end of it. And if you are, go ahead and remember to leave a like on this video. Let me know that you enjoyed it. If you want to see more of my content, I do these. I do other tip videos. I do progress videos. You name it, I probably do it. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you want to let me know your opinions on this video or let me know some feedback on the video or what you want to see me do. Go ahead and leave it in the comment section. That's what it's there for. And with all that being said, y'all take care. Take care of yourselves. Have fun. It's a game. Remember that. And remember to stay motivated.